Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're completing the Hummer H1 build by finishing up part 3 of the series. First off, let's have a quick look at where we got to in parts 1 and 2 of the build series. At this point, we've completed the chassis assembly in part 1 and the interior assembly in part 2. If you missed those videos and would like to check them out, I've left links in the description below. For part 3, we started off by firstly marrying the chassis and the interior together. Fairly straightforward, the interior simply just drops onto the chassis. Quite a tight fit, but it was crucial for the interior to be level, otherwise we would have had issues with the body panels lining up later. Next, I needed to paint up and finish off the body panels. They were all cleaned and rinsed in soapy water, then once dried, I could start by covering all the pieces with primer. I used Mr. Hobby's grey surface primer. This primer dries pretty quickly, so you can start painting within 15 to 20 minutes. For the body colour I wanted some kind of matte, so after some back and forth I ended up using Tamiya's XF63 German grey for the body. Nothing really to call out here, as usual with the Tamiya products, I got really good coverage, so I added a couple of coats of paint. Then to finish off the painting process, I wanted to cover the body panels with a clear to protect the paint, so I used a flat clear to retain the matte finish. The clear only takes a day or so to dry if not sprayed too thick. All the panels had some sort of final finishing that had to be done before I could assemble them to the main body. For the side panels, some elements had to be black. For example, there are some reflectors on the panel, as well as the fuel cups and housing had to be black. These black elements is a theme throughout all the panels that you'll see later on. There weren't a lot of decals on this build, but this panel in particular had a couple, mainly the fuel warning signs. Once the decals were attached, we could move on to assembly. The side panels were tricky to get into place, as similar to what I mentioned earlier with the interior, they had to line up perfectly, otherwise it'll be extremely difficult to line up as more panels were added. At this point they seemed to have gone in okay, so now it was just fingers crossed and hope the rest of the panels also go in as smoothly. Next was the windshield. First I had to get it painted up in XF1 flat black. Then we had a couple more reflectors to paint in. For the reflectors I had first painted them X11 chrome silver and then once dried I covered them with a clear colour. In this case it was X26 clear orange. Once that was done the glass pieces had to be dropped in. To glue in and hold the clear plastic bits I used Microscale's Micro Crystal Clear throughout this build. Then once dried I installed the windshield. It was a tricky one as it was really the first piece that I struggled with lining up and it had to be in a perfect position later on for the roof to be mounted. For the rear panel it was a similar theme to the side panels. There were bits that needed to be painted black first like the door handles, more reflectors, the rear light housing and the outer lining for the windows. I was deliberating for a while whether I should just mark the scup everything and spray it black but I ended up deciding against it because the parts were so small and the margin for it was massive so I decided to trust my left hand and just paint everything in freehand. Going this route took a lot of patience, it wasn't perfect but it turned out okay. For the reflectors and lights I painted a silver layer first before installing the lights or painting the reflector colours. The reflectors had to be red this time, so used Tamiya's X27 clear red. Once this was done, I installed the windows again using Micro Crystal Clear to hold them in place. Then once dried, I attached the rear body panel to the main body. Again, just making sure all the panels were lining up 
and the rear panel was vertically straight as possible. The dashboard still had to be assembled and decals had to be added. It was primarily two parts that had to be glued together first, then there were a few individual dials which had to be attached. Once the decals were in, I covered them with a the clear to protect them and glued in the dashboard. To finish off the roof, the window linings were all painted in flat black, again freehand. Then while I was waiting for that to dry, there was an upper lining piece that had to be painted. It was painted the same colour as the interior in XF66 light grey. Once dry, there were smaller parts that had to be glued in, like the emergency handles and speakers. I then attached the upper lining parts of the roof and also added a couple of internal lights, which I had already painted in clear orange. Once that was done, it was crunch time. For the roof to be glued in, the windshield, side and rear panels all had touch points to the roof. So if anything didn't line up, it was going to spell disaster. There was a little back and forth, but eventually I managed to mount the roof okay and all the panels lined up. Next, we had to put the winch together. Ming provided this white ribbon, which I started by painting silver, as I imagined the steel cable would be more of a silver color. Once painted and dried, I attached a hook to the cable, then rolled up the cable to the main winch assembly, which then attached to another housing, which would later attach to the main body of the H1. In the same step, I also finished off the engine cover, again with some elements which needed painted in flat black. Reflectors had to be painted first black, then some silver, and finished off in the clear colour. There were also some clear parts which had previously been painted, which were glued in. The engine cover also has two grills, one on top and another in front, both which are glued in place. The turn signal indicators were glued in, and finally topped off with the main headline covers. Then for assembly, I started off by gluing in the main radiator first. Then the winch assembly was attached at the front of the chassis. And to top it off, the engine cover was installed. The second to last step was entirely made up of the upgraded parts kit. The upgraded bull bar, spotlight mounting and roof rack. First all of these parts had to be painted up. They were all covered in X18 semi-gloss black. Then once dried, the bull bar was installed then the spotlight assembly, and finally the roof rack. There were also some parts which had to be glued in underneath the chassis. These appeared to be protective parts for the main engine elements when used off-road. 
Now onto the final step, the doors. The doors have two main elements, the inner and outer layer. For the inner layer, I painted those in XF66 light grey, as of the rest of the interior. Then masked them up and painted the top part flat black. While waiting for the interior door panels to dry, I started painting the door handles and window linings of each of the outer door panels. I then installed the wing mirrors, which in hindsight could have been done later, then attached the inner and outer layers to each other. Clear plastic windows were dropped and glued in, and finally I topped off the panels with some accent elements, and the doors were done. To attach the doors to the main body, each door had two hinges that had to be glued in place while holding the door in position. Then once the right rear passenger door was installed, the build was complete. And I called it good. That's it for this one guys, thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the H1 build series. If you liked the video consider subscribing and if you really liked the video give it a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next one, keep modeling.